Welcome to Living Life. Uh, what do you do on nights when you cannot go to sleep? Normally for me, what I do is end up lying down on the sofa. I try to listen to music or watch something, but usually that just kind of uh, wakes me up even more. Today's passage, it actually begins with a restless king, unable to go to sleep. And though this king was not an Israelite and he did not believe in God, we actually see him uh, quietly being led, uh, stirred up for a greater purpose. You know, what we ought to know before we even read this passage is that God is at work, even behind the scenes when we don't see it. Uh, that God is at work, even in our sleep or even in our restlessness. And God is at work, even for those who do not know who he is. Uh, for God always works for all our good and for his glory. Uh, so knowing that, let's all read the story of this restless king today. <music> Esther chapter 6 verses 1 through 14 That night the king could not sleep, so he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded there that Mordecai had exposed Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he had set up for him. His attendants answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. When Haman entered, the king asked him, what should be done for the man the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would rather honor than me? So he answered the king, For the man the king delights to honor, have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a horse the king has ridden, one with a royal crest placed on its head. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes, let them robe the man the king delights to honor and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Go at once, the king commanded Haman, get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew who sits at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. So Haman got the robe and the horse. He robed Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city streets, proclaiming before him, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman rushed home with his head covered in grief, and told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. His advisors and his wife Zeresh said to him, since Mordecai, before whom your downfall has started, is of Jewish origin, you cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. While they were still talking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived and hurried Haman away to the banquet Esther had prepared. We see in today's passage, uh, we take a break from Esther and Mordecai, and we actually see King Xerxes, and we see that he's unable to sleep. So he does what many people used to do, you know, before the advent of Netflix and television. Uh, he grabs a book. And as he is reading it, he remembers a time when Mordecai had saved him uh, from an assassination plot. And then he wonders what honor was given to Mordecai. And coincidentally, in that same time, uh, we see Haman. He's coming in actually to ask for permission to kill and impale Mordecai. It's a very strange occurrence, uh, but it's also a reminder for us today. Uh, with God, there are no accidents. There's only God and there's only His will. You know, we see this and we say, wow, what a great coincidence, right? But it's not just coincidence. You know, Mordecai wasn't lucky that King Xerxes managed to grab that one book and to open it to that perfect page. You know, even throughout this book, it's not luck that allowed Esther to become queen. You know, with God, there are no surprises. There are no coincidences. They are just Him. And even through these most difficult moments, you know, God is always at work. 
And in the same way that Xerxes remembered Mordecai, we must also remember that our God has not forgotten us as well. That God knows us, that He remembers us, and He knows everything about us. You know, there may be times, even as you walk this life of faith, uh, that you might feel unappreciated, you might feel forgotten, overlooked by God. And you could actually ask, right, you know, God, have you forgotten me? But Scripture tells us today and every day that our Father in heaven, not only does He know us, not only does He know us each by name, He even knows how many hairs we have on the top of our heads. And not only that, but our Father in heaven truly loves every one of us. You know, perhaps we don't hear that enough. Our God in heaven, He truly loves you for who you are. And not only that, that He's always working for our good. And though we might be anxious or in a hurry, we must also know that God is never in a hurry. He's never early. He's never late. That God is always on time for He is God. And His gracious hand is on every one of us. His providence caring for us. Uh, so today, knowing that God remembers us, let us have confidence that God is with us. Uh, let us know that you are not overlooked. Uh, you are not alone and that God is truly working for you and for your good. And on the other side, we see Haman, right? And we see Haman, he's about to go see the king to have Mordecai killed. Uh, but even before he's able to open his mouth and ask this, uh, we see the king asking, you know, what should be done for the man the king delights to honor? Now, Haman, uh, foolishly thinking that this is about him, he thinks about the greatest honor that could be bestowed upon him. Uh, because, of course, uh, any honor has to go to him. And he's actually horrified at the end when he realized that this honor is not meant for him, but is actually meant for the man that he wanted to kill. And now instead of impaling him, he has to honor him and, you know, present him in front of everyone. This is just great reversal. It's actually a sign of what is to come. You know, I should actually think about it, right? In this moment, Haman could have turned away from his hate. He could have saw the writing on the wall. He could have been humbled by the situation. And he could have just stopped pursuing this. And yet, his pride, it does not let him. Instead, he's filled with even more grief, even more anger. You know, for you, how do you deal with disappointments in your life? What do you do? When you have a disappointment in your life, do you get angry? Are you filled with grief? How do you actually respond to God? You know, sometimes, maybe not all the time, but sometimes a disappointment is actually a sign of God's providence, you know, asking you to slow down or perhaps take a deeper look at your heart, take a deeper look at yourself and ask, is this something that I should pursue or does God have a greater plan for me? Is this my pride forcing this situation and that's why I was rejected or is it actually God's will for me to continue? You know, I remember getting rejected to a school that I really wanted to get into when I was younger. And after lamenting and being very distraught, I was actually thinking, God, you promised me all this. Now, why did you not deliver? And I remember actually blaming God in that moment, only realizing much, much later that going to where I actually ended up going uh, was actually the perfect path for my life, that I wouldn't have any of the things that I had if I actually got into that school that I wanted, that my life would be so different and definitely not for the better. You know, even within the disappointments, we know that God is still working for our good. You know, even in the disappointments, allow it for an opportunity for us to be able to go back to God, to be able to seek Him and only seek Seek His ways. Uh, let us humble ourselves before God and not be able to go to a path of destruction and sin like Haman, uh, but only be able to follow what God wants us to follow. And at the end, we see Mordecai honored. Uh, he's remembered for his good deeds, his faithfulness. He's rewarded with a great honor. He receives the royal robe, a royal horse, a royal crest, and he's proclaimed in front of all right? That he is this honorable person. Once again, this honor is only a small part of what is to come. You know, we too, by reading this, uh, should be reminded of the honor that we received from a different king, a greater king, actually. You know, scripture tells us over and over again that we are sons and daughters of the King Most High, adopted into his family, co-heirs with Jesus Christ, uh, not based on who we are or what we have done, but only based on on God's goodness.
In today's passage, we're reminded that, that God remembers and knows every one of us, that God delights when we seek him and we are able to let go of our pride, even in the disappointing moments, and we know that God rewards us and blesses every one of us. So today, I pray that every one of us were able to go into our lives with confidence, knowing that our Father in heaven is always on our side, and even though we might not be able to see it and pinpoint exactly, that he is working through everything that we are. Reading today's passage, I was reminded of another passage from Hosea. Uh, Hosea chapter 14, verse 9, and it goes, Who is wise? Let them realize these things. Who is discerning? Let them understand. The ways of the Lord are, are right, the righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. You know, sleepless night, God allowed all of this to happen. And we must know that the ways of the Lord are always right. And when we are righteous, that we too can walk in his ways. Uh, but the rebellious, like Haman, will always stumble. So today, let us trust not in our wisdom, but let us trust in the wisdom of the Lord. Uh, there are times that we want it our way and we might not get it. Uh, but even in those situations, let us let go of our pride and let us be able to seek God in all that we do. The good, the bad, the terrible, the painful, the glorious, Every situation is another opportunity for us to be able to seek God and to be able to give Him the glory. So wherever you are today, let us surrender all of that to our good, good Father. Let us all pray. Father God, we thank you once again for giving us your word and reminding us who you are and who we are in you, Lord that you will never forget us, that you know us deeply and intimately, that you even know the hairs on our heads and you watch over us through everything. And though there may be moments when we are unable to see you, to be able to see how you are acting and moving, help us to always be able to trust in your goodness and place our trust in you. And we pray, Lord Father God, that every opportunity in life that we have, that we are able to turn to you, to seek you, and to bring you glory, Lord. We thank you, we love you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.